Good evening, brothers and sisters. Tonight it's going to be another exciting night because once more we are in the thick of the fight in defending family and life. And so, you know, one of the blessings that uh, uh, this, again, this controversy has brought to the family and life movements is that it has solidified the coalitions. It has solidified the coalitions, the different members, the different groups uh, are now bonding together in order to stand up and defend life. And so tonight, this is what we're going to have uh, for our assembly. Uh, we invited a panel of uh, speakers to give us a sort of an intervention so that we can understand uh, the issues that are being brought forth before us. Okay, so tonight, uh, let me just introduce to you our panelists so that um, we can have just a free-flowing discussion and feel free also to, to take on um, the microphone for uh, at every, every time a speaker ends or when an intervention is made, then you can come in and ask the question. Okay, let me start by just introducing to you who uh, my brother, our brother is on my left. Uh, he is uh, Dr. Lito Sandejas, and he is part of uh, one of the major leaders in the coalition that we have for pro-life. And we are in this together. And last Saturday, actually, we had a meeting of about 90 leaders of uh, the pro-life organizations. We, we all started with just 17, no? about 17, the last meeting last month. But we're growing in numbers. And this is a good sign because you're talking about the top leaders of the pro-life movement coming together. So uh, Dr. Sandez is with us. And he's going to introduce to us also uh, one of his colleagues in the work because both of them belong to Opus Dei. And uh, of course, before I do that, let me just introduce and welcome again Dr. Ligaya Acosta from Human Life International, our very own sister. Okay, so let me just pass on the microphone to Lito now to uh, give a little more introduction uh, about one of our main speakers for tonight. Thank you, Maribel, and good evening. I have a uh, great pleasure to introduce to you a, a longtime colleague, even from school at De La Salle. Uh, Bernie, as you all know, is an uh, economics writer, uh, and he's been doing this uh, since his PhD from Harvard, uh, when he came back and shortly after formed the Center for Research and Communi Communications, CRC, which uh, uh, was formed to precisely communicate well uh, economic principles and the results of their economic research, uh, which later grew to the University of Asia and Pacific that we know now. And so most of you are very familiar with Bernie's articles in the newspapers, his speaking engagements, and so on. And many of you know him as the prophet of boom, uh, because he's been very uh, uh, bullish about the Philippines in general, as we all are, I'm sure. Um, it is very appropriate that he is uh, speaking to us on a pro-life uh, concern, because uh, many of you might know that uh, the provision in the Philippine Constitution of 1986, which uh, uh, helps uh, prevent abortion from uh, becoming very widespread already, uh, is that provision in the Constitution which uh, speaks of protecting life from the moment of conception. Bernie was in the forefront of pushing that in the Constitutional Commission of 1986, which uh, we are relying upon uh, very much to, to prevent uh, abortion from becoming uh, as widespread as it is in other countries. Uh, the other fact that uh, would be interesting for you to know about Bernie is that uh, he would like to request your prayers for his mother who celebrates her 101st 
birthday tomorrow. And uh, she is uh, quite well. Her mind is still very lucid, so she's very lucky. And she is the daughter of our national hero, General Miguel Malvar of uh, Batangas. So please welcome Bernie Villegas. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you that I'm going to talk about the reprodu reproductive health bill completely from the economic standpoint. There are so many provisions in that bill that are objectionable. Whether it be that they will try to teach your 11-year-old daughter about all the possible ways of contraception, condoms, IUDs. Can you imagine teaching 11-year-old girls in school? Another objectionable thing that I will not discuss is that you parents can be sent to jail if you interfere in sex education. Or that health workers can be sent to jail if they refuse to participate in ligation, in anything that has to do with contraception. Those are in themselves, just in themselves, enough to completely condemn the RH bill. But my point here is that from the economic standpoint, the premise of the RH bill that population growth is the source of poverty is economic nonsense. And I am speaking as a professional economist. I'm not bringing any moral issues. And incidentally, this is the way to fight the battle against the culture of death. To use all the possible disciplines, economics, psychology, medicine, politics, as well, of obviously, as philosophy and theology, to tell the world, not only Catholics, to tell Muslims, to tell Buddhists, to tell pagans, that contraception is not a solution to the problem of poverty. So let me begin very briefly, summarize the history of the thought that population control is necessary to attain economic development. And this started more than 200 years ago, in the middle of the 18th century, with an English moral philosopher, because he was not an economist, by the name of Thomas Malthus. I'm sure you have heard of the so-called Malthusian theory. And this professor developed a theory which stated that population is increasing geometrically 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, while in his opinion, food supply is increasing only arithmetically. Five, six, seven, eight. And so he said, even if you start with there being enough food, like you start with five for food and two for population, in a very simplistic way he said, sooner or later, because food is increasing geometrically, I'm, I'm, so population is increasing geometrically, but food only arithmetically. Sooner or later, there will not be enough food for people and there will be mass starvation, millions 